Hey, I'm Mechanical Engineer, and you're watching the first ever episode of Finite Friday. So congratulations. Finite Friday, show between show, I explain something fine, also no small in today's episode, Screw Switches. As you just heard, Finite Friday is the mini show in between my regular episodes where I take the time to explain something small. I know my upload schedule is starting to get a little bit confusing, but basically I'm trying to get back to posting one video a week every single week on a Friday, and hopefully this show will help me get there. Since this is a brand new show, I might accidentally miss an upload here or there trying to work out the kinks, but you know the ultimate goal. So without any further ado, let's get started on what you actually came to see. Now before we get into this, I guess the first thing we should address is what the heck is a screw switch? Well, a screw switch is basically comprised of three parts. You have the two nuts, which my electrical tape will symbolize, and then you have the bolt that goes with the nuts that my Sharpie will symbolize. So basically, each nut is going to serve as one leg of the switch. When you connect up a battery to this, no power can pass through, because as you can see, there's a giant gap. But as soon as you drive your bolt through both nuts, it completes the circuit and allows power to pass through. But that's basically just your standard switch, just built a little differently. So why can't we use a standard switch? Well, in combat robots, which is where you most commonly find these types of switches, there are a lot of high impacts. So if you use a standard switch, it could get turned off just by getting hit by another robot, which is not good. But with this switch, really the only way it could turn off without you manually unscrewing it is if it somehow vibrated loose. But I mean, as long as you tighten it tight to begin with, the chances of that are very slim. So now that you have a basic rundown of how it works, let's get started on the build. Since I'm designing this switch for no larger than a 3 pound robot, I'm going to use a 440 bolt because it's super tiny but at the same time should be more than large enough. There is a slight problem with the 440 bolt though. Well not the bolt, it's actually the nuts. We're going to need to attach leads to these nuts. I was originally just going to use solder as like glue, but solder does not stick to these very well at all. It breaks off extremely easily. So instead, I'm going to use square 440 nuts. This way we should have enough room to drill a very tiny hole in one of the corners of the nuts. That way I can just feed the small wire through the hole, bend it over, and solder it to itself. Plus, it's going to be a lot easier to build a secure housing for a square nut than it would be the original. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the smallest drill bit I have handy, which is this 1 16th bit, and then we can drill one super small hole into each nut. And here we go, two teeny tiny nuts with two teeny tiny holes. The first time I made this switch, I thought drilling these holes was going to be a lot more difficult. I thought I was going to have to do several different tries until I finally got one that actually worked. But lucky for us, that's not the case. As long as you mount this nut relatively low in the vise so that the drill bit can't move around too much, it's actually super easy. I've drilled like 20 of these nuts so far because I've made switches to give to my cousins and I've only messed up on one nut. So it's actually pretty easy. Now with the holes drilled, it is finally time to attach our leads. I'm just using 22 gauge stranded wire and all we're going to have to do is cut out about a 2.5, 3 inch long piece like this and then strip one of the ends. Perfect. Now we'll feed that in through the hole in the nut we just drilled, loop it back onto itself like that, then solder it in place. And here we are. As you can see, the wire is mounted at about a 45 degree angle off of one of the sides of the bolt. And that's not an accident. We actually need it to be like this so it can fit properly in the housing. Speaking of housings, I have designed one on my CAD software and I'll leave a link to the file down below. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and take that file to my 3D printer and get started on printing. And here we are, a beautiful teeny tiny little housing. As you can see, there's two little slots in the housing intended for our two nuts. And one corner of each slot is actually a lot bigger than the rest of the slot, and that is actually where our nut's wire is supposed to slide into. So what I'm going to do is take each nut just like this and insert it into a slot. I'll then give them a slight push to make sure they're down all the way, then run our bolt through to make sure they're perfectly straight. Perfect. Now that we know that everything is positioned properly, we can drop in just a little bit of hot glue and cut the wires down to a more manageable size. 
As you can see, I cut them a different length so when you attach wires to them, you don't have to worry about them shorting out and you only have to use one piece of heat shrink. Sorry, John, I didn't do that for yours, I wasn't thinking. So with that, all that's left to do is to screw in the little tiny mounting screws into the back of the frame so that we can mount this thing anywhere we want. Perfect, and just like that, your switch is finished and ready to be mounted and used. Let's go ahead and hook this up to a battery and give it a quick test. Testing time. So I got my battery hooked up to two alligator clips and then I have that ran through my switch to the motor. I've already backed out the screw, so now if we go ahead and tighten this down, and it will take a second because I really did back it out, we see the motor turn on and unscrew it, motor turns off, on, off. Beautiful. It works. And as far as how much this switch can handle, the wires are the weak point of it. So basically, if your wires can take the load, your switch can take it. And in case you're wondering, the finished size of this switch, not counting the mounting bolts or wires, is about 11 by 14 by 9 millimeters. Here it is on the face of a quarter. And the finished weight of it, including everything, is 3.5 grams. I actually used this switch in my one pound bot Talon and it worked great. Gotten a few fights, especially a few with spinners and didn't have any issues. Really love this switch, really love the design and I'm definitely planning on using it in the future. And that concludes episode one of Finite Fridays. What'd you think? Did you like it? Let me know in the comments down below. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe and Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to subscribe. Like my new background, I completely redecorated for you.